Oh yeah, uh, Wednesday today, and um, yeah, I've just had a bit of sad news really. I, well, I say that I um, I was I was in the uh, there's a, there's a Whole Foods right shop just around the corner from me, and I was talking to a guy there who's who's clearly a runner, and I was sharing an anecdote about um, my friend Julio, who owns like a few sort of top end stores in Cambridge. And he's also a damn good runner. And uh, now one year on the London Marathon, he he forgot to take his number with him. And uh, you know, I said to him before the run, I said, "Well, don't worry, mate. I said that you know it'll be it'll be fine because you got we we have a chip in our shoe, and so you, you know it proves that you've, you've actually run the whole race." And um, he got right to the. Uh, to the end, almost to the end, past the 26 mile mark, just into the point, point two of a mile, and about four stewards physically stopped him from finishing because he didn't have his number. And this is about 15 years ago, and he still smarts about this. And every time I see him, I pull his leg about it. And I had a, I had a similar experience, and um, a, a marathon in Luton. It was a very hot day. I had my number, but I took my shirt off, and I just like had my shirt tucked tucked in my shorts, and my number was visible. And when I finished the run, this official who was a right job's worth, um, he said to me, "No, you can't have a medal. I'm not giving you a medal because you know you've broken your rules. You're not wearing a shirt." Well, after running 26 miles, my dander was up, and I was just about, a, <laughs> I was just about to chin him. And the f there was a friend of mine there, this guy, Barry, Barry Woolman. And uh, Barry Woolman poured oil on travel waters. He said, look, bugger off, Tom, I'll get your medal for you. And I'll see you in Cambridge. And uh, this guy, Barry, um, lovely man. I first knew him when I was a kid. He was a scout, he was a scout leader and he was... Um, he was he was the he was a he was a scouting leader who used to do all the things with us like mountain climbing, canoeing, all the really exciting stuff, you know, um, abseiling, you know. He was and uh, he was well into his cross country. He was I think he was a leading light in the English cross country union, and he was on the committee that um, set up the London Marathon, and he was always involved, heavily involved in scouting. Uh, in the London Marathon, and also when I was a shop steward, um, I was a shop steward for Nalgo, he was also on the shop stewards committee, I can't remember what, what department he worked in, but it was something to do with social services anyway, and yeah, apparently he passed away in May, poor old boy, and I, I was very sad, because I, I, you know, I did think a lot of him, he was, he was a really nice bloke, um, well, and a scout leader about whom there was nothing dodgy at all. You know, very happily married man. So yeah, yeah. So that was a bit sad, and uh, but yeah, it, you know, it made made me smile thinking about the other things. Anyway, um, but yeah, today I was, I, yeah, I was thinking about um, tithing. Um, now tithing is a tradition in the in the Christian church where and it's quite an ancient tradition. I think it's probably dates to pre-Christian times, a tithe actually means a tenth. And it's, you know, it, it's where you give a tenth of your income to the church or, or to charity. And this tradition is, like, it's not peculiar to um, Christianity. I mean, in, in Islam, uh, they call it Zakat. And I think I pronounced that right, Z-A-K-A-T. And they... They sort of work out a percentage of their income that people should give to be given to charity. And um, it's the same in Buddhism, I'm sure, probably in Judaism and in Sikhism and Hinduism. Um, you know, there, there's in, these parallels in all the religions. And um, a friend of mine, Kathy, um, she, I don't know if she's still she was very heavily involved in the church in London. And um, she told me that she, and at the time she didn't have a lot of money, I know she didn't, but she said she gave a tenth of her income to the church. And she said, you know, even though she didn't have a lot, at the end of the week she always had enough money in her purse. And, uh, yeah, this sort of, you know, started me thinking. And um, 
I spoke to my mum about it, you know, that's when my mum was still sort of like, you know, pretty cosmos meant this and and my mum was a you know, sort of big Christian lady and she, and she she said the same that she she ever since my dad died she'd tithed. And the same thing, that she you know, she was never ever short of money, you know, never ever, even though and I think the idea is that you you know, if you you give I don't know, you know, like give the first tenth of God he will bless the other nine tenths, and yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting thought. But um, and I've noticed in the secret they say um, about sort of you know um, giving money away, you know, that you know the I think Rhonda Byrne she was saying that when she was right at the low ebb, she was making the film of the secret, but the money wasn't coming through like she was hoping, and she was down to her last few hundred dollars and she just went out into the street and started was giving people you know ten dollar bills and sure enough within about a week like the funding that she wanted came through the film was a massive success and you know the rest as they say is history and you know people like Bill Gates he gives a lot of money to to charity I'm sure I think Richard Branson does they all got their own <coughs> charitable, charitable foundations the Rockefellers you know, and it's yeah, just like an interesting, just an interesting thought, really. I, you know, and I'd be, yeah, it's something I'd like. I just, you know, like people's feedback from it, really, what, what other people think. And um, I mean, I know one, what, just one last thing. Um, one of the richest men in the world must be Warren Buffett, and um, I, he was interviewed a while ago, and they said. Um, can money buy you happiness? And he said, oh yeah. He said, yeah, money will definitely buy you happiness. He said, but only when you give it away. So, on that thought, um, I'll leave it and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Okay, have a nice day. Cheers, bye-bye.